Being involved in a train crash is awful enough, being trapped in a huge bent wreckage that looks like a modern art sculpture, but at least you would be able to find nearby help. However, in this story, help would be nowhere nearby. This is the chilling story of the Xanthus train collision of 1999. 18th of August 1999. Two trains were heading along the Trans-Australian Railway, a massive railway line between Port Augusta and Kalgoorlie, including one of the biggest segments of completely straight track in the world, and the biggest in Australia. This line stabbed its way through to Nullarbor, a massive flat plain stretching across the outback, barely any trees, bushes or water out there, just sweeping sand. The line had its own small settlements along the line, however by the 90s it had all become ghost towns except for Hook. At the crossing loop at the town of Xanthus, one of the trains, a container train heading east, was waiting for the westbound Indian Pacific service to, to Perth to pass by. They both had NR-class locomotives driving them. The second engine man was waiting at the control panel for the points for the opposing train to pass through. Out of habit, he had the control panel box unlocked and opened. Unfortunately, out of habit, he pressed the button to operate the points at an inappropriate time, and the opposing train was diverted at a speed of 27 kilometers per hour. Then, the inevitable happened. The trains collide, and the cars buckle up. 21 people were injured, however, thankfully there were no deaths. However, all of these people injured and bleeding were in the middle of nowhere. How would they find help? Simple. Called the Royal Flying Doctor Service. 21 passengers and crew from the Indian Pacific were airlifted by the Royal Flying Doctor Service to Kalguri Hospital from the remote Kunana airstrip, conveniently only 40 kilometers from the crash site. Only two passengers were admitted for overnight observations. Westrail provided two prospector rail cars to transfer the remainder of the passengers back to Kalguri. All 19 coaches of the Indian Pacific received varying degrees of damage, from minor internal damage to the write-off of luggage slash smoking car HM311. Some abandoned wreck carriages are still at the site. At that time, Great Southern Rail, the operator of the Indian Pacific, estimated the damage to the coaches to be of the value of 5 million. National Rail Corporation estimated the damage to locomotives NR15 and NR51 at around 1 million. Since the accident, the operation of the points at this and other crossing loops has been altered so that the points indicator lights will not operate until the access process is completed, and this gives all trains time to stop at the red points indicator lights. The simplified overview of process is access box 120 to 180 second delay all line points are slash change to red, door opens. 60 to 90 second delay until point control inputs are accepted, points can then be changed. Closed door slash seal box, lights are changed to indicate point positions, all traffic then proceeds as directed. This accident happened because the points were not fully interlocked and were merely a kind of power assisted hand lever with automatic normalization. Sadly, this wouldn't be the Indian Pacific's only wreck. In 1970, a test run of the train struck a derailed freight train, ripping out the sides of the coaches. In 1975, a service derailed on a Trans-Australian at Raw Linna due to a collapsed bogey. In 1978, a service crashed at Forbes due to a washaway. Then, this accident happened. Just a couple months later, in December 1999, the Glenbrook train disaster happened, which I've already done a documentary about. Then, in 2017, a service derailed just after the train left Perth. Hopefully, we won't find ourselves in another wreck with this train in the future.